it's Jermaine. It's Kelly. And we're here at EGLX 2019. And we're probably just gonna go around and what are we gonna do, Kelly? I, don't know. I think we're just gonna go bug people, really. Yeah, we're just gonna bug people and like see what they're doing and probably play some video games. I hope we don't get yelled at. We probably will, but let, let's go check it out. Might as well go do that anyways. Yeah, let's go. EGLX 2019, and I'm here with... Mike Manojlovic from Nordwolf. Okay, sweet. So, <laughs> it's like, okay, sweet. Uh, so, we're here, you're here demoing a game, you're presenting a game, you've been working on it Absolutely, for two years, yeah. you ran us through how cool it is, there's a lot of inspiration. Yep. So, just to start it off, give us a little bit of an idea of what your game is about. Absolutely, yeah, this is a game that I've been solo creating yep. for last two and a half years. Uh, it's inspired by Diablo 1 and Castlevania games. It's a very dark 2D, uh, kind of like an action uh, Souls-like uh, with some roguelike elements. Uh, but again, very dark and it takes you to hell. And it's very like, um, it, it, it's, it's an attack on your nerves and uh, so it's, yeah. And it's almost Halloween, so it's quite fitting. Exactly, so yeah. <laughs> So maybe you'll have some cosplayers around. Absolutely, it's getting popular on Halloween. Every Halloween, it's lots of players. So. So you you were describing to us like you have a very interesting background because you have a programming background, correct? That's right. And you had to learn everything as you go, right? Yes, and that was fun. I'll tell you that. No, it wasn't fun. Um, yeah, so I come from pure like you know programming background, working in a corporate world, and um, did it for a while, and then became extremely bored with it. So I decided to create video games. I love video games. And uh, somewhere down the road, I decided, you know what, maybe I can draw. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was an interesting journey. Uh, learning how to draw and then learning how to animate was, uh, was an interesting process. But, uh, but yeah, down the road, I learned that, yeah, I can do this after years of practice. So, yeah. So there's there's hope for people who are starting out later on and they want to do it with this. I'm 38. Kind of if I can do this, anybody can do this. So you you mentioned that you tested this by putting it on something on like YouTube to see how people would react. That's right. So um, originally I was going to hire an artist to do the artwork for me because I'm not an artist. I'm a programmer, uh, but I couldn't find the right person. So I started drawing artwork like stick figures uh, to uh, to be able to share my thoughts and my ideas when I hire somebody. But that took a long time. Like after like six, seven months, I had a basic artwork that looked okay. And so I was like, you know what, let me put it on YouTube and just see what people think. And I had a lot of comments, positive comments, uh, saying how, wow, this looks great. The artwork looks great. And I was so surprised, like my artwork looks great. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, maybe well, if I continue working on it, maybe I'll get better. And so that's what happened. You, I kept learning new tools. Uh, I kept meeting in events like these, meeting, uh, meeting people who also gave me a lot of ideas. Um, and that's how I kind of move forward and just kind of patience and practice and patience is a key. Very cool. Yeah. So you have a really interesting element in your game with tarot cards. How did you come up with the tarot cards aspect to this game? So one of my relatives has uh, multiple sclerosis and he told me once that, you know, you don't get to pick the cards that you're dealt in your life. Uh, but you get to choose how you play the cards that you have. And I thought that was really like a cool uh, way to live your life. Um, and I wanted to take that concept and put it into the game. And so in the game, in the beginning of the game, you get a tarot card reading when you start a new character that makes, that alters the way that the game is to a cer certain degree. Uh, enemies, like you get certain skills uh, and abilities, but the enemies might be harder or easier. Different areas open up. You, f you may have different enemies and the way when you get to hell, because the player goes, descends into hell, you're gonna have a different experience. And also if you get the worst tarot cards that you can, well you get a terminal illness in a game, which completely al alters the gameplay. So it, may, it gives me an ability as a solo creator to make a game unique to a certain degree when you play it. 
almost like a choose your own adventure except you have no control over it exactly very, exactly very cool. and you might think that hey you know i'm gonna recreate the game every time to get the good cards and it will work in the beginning but that when you get down deeper deeper into hell well if you had bad cards it's gonna be much better so it's kind of it gives it that kind of unique flavor uh, okay, so I'm going to ask you a question that's probably my favorite question to ask any game developer. What video games growing up shaped you into the person you are today? Wow, that's a, that's a phenomenal. I think um, what shaped me <laughs> is definitely, I would say, uh, like a Diablo, Diablo 1 type of a game. And reason being is that um, it's, it's a, it was a challenging game. Yeah, but it was also like very like where you had to be focused and you had to kind of go in and build your character to be able and that's kind of one of the reasons where i kind of learned the uh, growing up and going into the world of like working and so forth is that we can all achieve everything that we want you just have to be patient you have to work hard so that was one of the games but of course zeldas and marios and donkey kongs and Donkey Kong country was one of those games that i realized that with simple graphics you can make something that is Phenomenal, so. Thank you for your time. Your game's looking awesome and we can't wait for it to come out. Hopefully, hopefully you send us like, you know, a copy so we can Absolutely. review it. Absolutely, for sure, Amazing. for sure. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right, well, have a great day. Hey guys, um, the Lunchbox crew has made their way here to Lightning Rod Games and I'm here standing with... Mark LaFron, boys. Hello, Mark. It's very nice to meet you. And we're just going to talk to him about their game, which is called A Fold Apart. So could you tell us a little bit about this game? Sure. So it's a puzzle game about a long distance relationship in a world of folding paper. <laughs> All right. Um, I can already tell that I might need tissues. So please tell me you have tissues. <laughs> oh, OK, good. I'm going to hold one just in case. OK, so um, I guess without ruining the story too much, do you want to actually get into telling us a little sure. bit about the story, what it's about? So the story is about an architect and a teacher. And the architect has moved away for work. So he moved to the city from their hometown. And uh, so the architect's working on different things. And they're, they're apart. And so there's a lot of emotions that both of them are feeling, both sort of maybe being a bit lonely or a bit maybe feeling a bit abandoned and so we kind of we kind of go through the story and see how each character is kind of coping with the being the separation of being apart from one another so you alternate between both characters as you go throughout the game yeah so one of the big ways we tell the story is through text messaging and inevitably with text messaging there's miscommunication so a lot of the emotional aspects of the game are is someone will say something and the other person might interpret it in a way that maybe wasn't intended and it'll cause them to have like this emotional reaction and go into this world where all the puzzles take place. And so the puzzles are sort of their way of working through the emotions that they're feeling. Oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, so you mentioned that it's a puzzle game. Um, why did you choose to make it a puzzle game? I know that might be a little bit of a strange question, but what do you... Um, I really like puzzle games with stories, and I think I think they they match well, and especially so when the gameplay mechanics match the theme of what we're trying to do. And, and, and when we kind of had that idea, it, it was two separate ideas originally. I wanted to make a game about a long distance relationship because I had been in one um, for about a year and a half. So before starting the studio, I was working at Disney, and my significant other was in Orangeville, Ontario. And so for about a year and a half, we were living apart. I really wanted to make a game that touched on those emotions of being apart but I wanted a gameplay that matched it. And so it was a brainstorming session that myself and my co-founder Steven were having, where he's like, oh, what about the back of a bad magazine? Where it's like, a, one picture you fold and make a new picture. I'm like, that's interesting. I don't know if there's gameplay there. And, then I, and like a couple months later, I was like, oh, we can combine the two. And so the original inspiration for the fold apart was that if you have a character living on one side of a piece of paper and a character living on the other side, they're in two different worlds. <laughs> <laughs> but if you fold that paper, you can kind of like merge their two worlds together. And that's kind of what it feels like when you're apart, like you're physically separated for some reason, either work or school or family. And you just kind of wish you could like mash two physical locations together. And that was where the inspiration came from. And then we kind of expanded it from there. So, Wow. Okay. So um, please tell me that your story has a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and and the, game, the game does as well. So. Spoiler alert. Um, can you tell us about a game that maybe you played in your childhood that like really inspired you to this day and maybe might have been a reason why you created this game? 
Yeah, so when I was growing up, um, I had a PC, but I didn't have any consoles. And so the games I really, really liked playing were the adventure games, so like Sierra, the King's Quest, or the LucasArts adventure games like Curse of My Island. Um, those were always one of my big favorite ones. I think my absolute favorite game when I was a child was Grim Fandango. And that was actually, it was really funny, when Steve and I met in university, that was the game that we both said, this is a type of, we want to work in this industry where you can tell these cool stories and in, in a video game medium. And that was kind of what inspired us to, to get into everything in the first place. So that was, I'd say that's kind of like the core inspiration for it. So I really like these narrative puzzle games ever since I was a kid, so yeah. Speaking of which, when does a Fold Apart come out and like what platforms are you planning to release it on? So it's going to come out on Apple Arcade in about a month or two and it'll also be on a Switch and PC for Valentine's Day and then PS4 and Xbox uh, sometime after that. So. All right, lovely. Um, thank you so much for talking to us. Could you tell us if people want to find out more about a Fold Apart, where could they get that information? Okay, so our website is afoldapart.com. Um, we also have a Twitter, which is LRG for Lightning Rod Games, LRG Thunder. Um, and then also a Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash Lightning Rod Games. So. All right, thank you so much for talking to us. We hope you have a great rest of the weekend at EGLX. Francisco Garcia. And what are we here doing? What are we looking at? So today we're showing from uh, HitGrab Game Labs, uh, our first platformer combat puzzle game called Clan O'Connell. Uh, it's the first time that we're showing it to the public, so it's pretty exciting for all of us at uh, the company. Very cool. Yeah. So can, what can you tell us about the game? So the game, in the game you play three characters that you switch back and forth. Each character has distinct abilities uh, for both combat, puzzle solving, and platforming. And um, the length of the game will be across 20 levels with three different boss fights. And it's referencing a lot of the old platformers like Castlevania, Metroid, uh, but also um, modern tanks like Wacamelee nowadays, you know, or uh, Hollow Knight, or even Dead Cells. So would you say that those are games that inspired you growing up? Absolutely, yeah. All, all Nintendo games, that's, that was my bread and butter. Uh, Battletoads, Battle Toads, uh, Teenage, Mutant Ninja, Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, obviously Castlevania series, uh, Mega Man. And that's where I got the inspiration of trying to do something similar. Have you been over at the Nintendo booth yet? Not yet. We've been, luckily, we've been very busy getting a lot of people that have come over and, you know, play the game and, you know, just answering questions. So, in terms of story-wise, in terms of the aesthetic, what would you like to tell us about the game that new people wouldn't know? So, in terms of the aesthetics, we went for um, the style of um, basically childhood heroes from ours, like the creator of Samurai Jack, Gendy Tartakovsky. Yeah. And uh, in terms of art of the game, like the backgrounds, we're taking a lot from uh, old DC movies like Sleeping Beauty, the work of Evan Earl, with very rich graphic design style but also mixed with the Celtic lore, because we really are going deep with the Celtic lore for the game. And that's where the story comes from. The story comes from, um, you know, like grabbing the, the old gods and creatures of mythology of, of, uh, of that part of the world and turning into a game. How are people liking it? We're really, really happy to say that people are really, uh, you know, excited about playing the game. Like they see it from from a from a mile, and and they're like, I just wanted to come check it out because it looks really great. And then they sit down and play it, and they're like, it's actually it's a lot of fun. It's not only the looks; it plays well, it's fluid, and that's a lot of motivation to keep going and finish the game. Because you guys are actually in a very good spot here. I mean, you guys are facing the walkway area. You got like a nice view of all the esports stuff going on too every once in a while. We were lucky. I, I didn't know if we actually got this spot or was there a mix up? Because I, I think there was a mix up, but you know, the better because it worked out well. We had a lot of uh, eyeballs on the game and that's great. So I asked you about what your favorite games growing up were, but what is the game that shaped you into the person you are today to become a game developer? Ah, tough question. 
Because I have a lot, right? You can say more than one. Um, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles scar me for life. Okay. Because there was this particular level where you're swimming and uh, you have to get to points where you have to get uh, air, but everything you touch, it's, uh, it's electrified. Yeah. And I died so many times. And I was like, I just want to get in there and change things so badly. Never finished it, but you know, I still look at it on YouTube this, to this day to see other people how they finished it. That was one of those games that stayed with me and just like made motivated me because I got a lot of hours of entertainment out of it. Very true, very true. I mean, then you're like, well, I rage quit. I'm going to become a developer now. <laughs> You know, one of the funniest things about it is that um, I actually studied animation. Okay. And, um, you know, because of how the industry goes, sometimes you end up in a studio, sometimes you end up working for, a, for an animation studio, sometimes for a gaming studio. Yeah. I ended up in a gaming studio. And, uh, and, you know, I didn't really intend to go into gaming. But when the opportunity arose, I was like, I'm ready for this. Kind of like manifested it. Exactly. It was like, this is your chance, Francisco. Get revenge. Get revenge in that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Kelly. Yeah, no problem. And I hope the, the game does really, really well. And uh, when it's out, let us know. It's the lunchboxes here at Haunted Castle Gaming. Um, and I'm standing here with... Asit Qureshi. Yeah. We're here with Asit. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on at his booth. OK? So. What it looks like to me here is you guys have a card game. Could you tell us a little bit about what the game is about? For sure. So Genesis is a tactical collectible card game. A uh, big concept about the game is to get you out from behind the hand and actually in combat, engaging with your opponent. So you pick a character and you're actually playing as that character in combat. And uh, if you want to engage with your opponent, you got to move across the board and actually come to hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat with your opponent. So a lot of the concepts that we have in here are very unique for the card game space. Most games are very static, so you're dropping your cards and you're just attacking with them. Here, direction and distance matter a lot. Everything you play is bounded by a distance and a direction. So it makes gameplay very unique, makes strategy very different, and it grasps audience from all ages, from people five-year-old up to 40 are playing the game very actively. Very cool. Can you tell us maybe like the inspiration that you had for creating this game? Sure. So um, when it comes to the game itself, it started off uh, when I, me and my friends were in high school uh, and we didn't have enough money to play Magic. So we decided to make up our own card game uh, and that just grew and grew. As I was in university, I started playing new concepts from computer science, linguistics and English into the game. And then v eventually when I graduated and started working for a company, I decided to figure out what it's like to run my own company. So that's when I launched the game. For the lore itself, I wanted to focus on uh, what the humans, like uh, what we did in our early days traveling across the world. So humans started in Africa, then moved to uh, Egypt, the branch went off to Europe, some of them went south towards India, and then over to China. So my mythology focuses around the African, Egyptian, Indian, and Chinese lore incorporated into the game. That is so very cool. Could you tell us about the artwork, like who's drawn it, and yeah. So I have probably one of the most amazing teams. They're people from across the world, uh, and they work cohesively as a team, and I'm so proud of them. Uh, our lead, Damian, he's in uh, Finland right now. He works on a lot of big games, and I'm so grateful that he takes the time out of his day to work on this project as well. Uh, and the idea behind it was we wanted to incorporate um, a lot of different elements, mythologies that people don't normally encounter. So one thing that we did that I'm really proud of is like we added in uh, Nagas, not just from the European mythology, but more from the Malaysian mythology, where there are sea snakes instead of land creatures. So I wanted to take something that was a little bit different there. And then the other thing we looked at was how do we add females into the game and empower them in a lot of ways. So six of our eight main characters are all female. And when we look at their clothing, when we look at their poses, we want to make them strong, powerful women so that people can experience multiple different cultures, multiple different perspectives in this one game. All right, now you've got me hooked and I want to play the game. We've been selling since uh, October of 2017. We're now in 10 different retail shops, mainly in the Southern Ontario area, but we are selling on Amazon Prime along with on our website at genesisbattleofchampions.com. Uh, and there's a shop button on the top right corner, so you can click there and pick up the product. And we ship, any, and we ship across the world. 
Wow, okay, so it is a worldwide affair. Um, for the public, for people who want to know more about Genesis, can you tell us where they could find you online? So our biggest uh, following is on Facebook. That's where we do most of our posts. So you can look up Genesis Battle Champions there. Uh, on our website, GenesisBattleChampions.com, and also on YouTube. So you can just search us there. Thank you so much for spending the time to speak to me, Asid. Um, have a good day. I'm here with? Dino. Jordan. And what are we, what are we taking a look at today? Uh, Forgone, it's our uh, action platformer. Uh, obviously, Dead Cell vibes to it. Uh, we're a linear story-driven game. Uh, levels are entirely handcrafted. Uh, heavy focus on loot and uh, the synergies you get from between those two things. Loot, skill tree. So in terms of your, con I guess, like what you've worked on on the game, what do you do in the game for the game and what do you do? Uh, I'm a designer, so I report to the lead designer and then I also work with a level designer. Like character or environment? Uh, level designer does all the, the layouts for the level. Okay. I do the systems and the progression, anything related to that stuff. Combat balance. Uh, okay, very cool. And yourself? I'm the producer, so I just tell everybody else what to do. Kind of manage the timelines, make sure that we're going to make it, get a, get a game out. So. so what can you tell us about the story of the game? Uh, your character has the title of an arbiter. Uh, the game starts off with you being sent on a, on a mission to deal with some stuff, and then some things happen and we'll kind of reveal the rest of it as people get to play it. Cool, cool. So we played a bit of the demo and the demo was very easy to pick up. We were just talking about being PlayStation people and the transition between a, a PlayStation controller using an Xbox one, but it just seems like it was very easy to use, like easy to navigate. So is there, um, is that like a key focus that you guys wanted to do with the game? Yeah, ease of, ease of controls is very important. Uh, we want people to feel like uh, whenever they play the game, any mistake or any death that happens, it's not because the game had done something cheap. We want it to feel like it was within your control and you can fix those mistakes as you play on again. So um, what can you tell us about like the company and like where you guys are from and things like that? Uh, we're from London. We've been making games like 15 years now. I think we got like 120 plus titles over those 15 years. Uh, our biggest success was a mobile game called My Singing Monsters, you may have heard of that, uh, which has kind of fueled uh, the ability to make this game. So it's our first real jump into the PC, console, that type of games. And we, we're just going with something that a good majority of the teams always wanted to make. So, so where would people be able to find the game? Uh, you can find it on Steam right now. You just search Forgone. You can find it on our website, which is bigbluebubble.com slash Forgone. I believe there's a bigbluebubble.com slash foregone events as well if you want to follow any news and that sort of thing. And then we have Discord, Instagram, Twitter. Am I missing anything? I think we have everything. All TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's just talking about TikTok lately. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, one thing that we've been actually asking game developers, and it's more of like a personal question to them, um, is what video games, video games or fandoms really shaped who you are today? as you guys are in the games industry? StarCraft, Diablo, uh, Mega Man X series in general, and Final Fantasies for me. Final Fantasy, same thing. Final Fantasy, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> How about you? Uh, mine was a lot of like Diablo, World of Warcraft, pretty big part. Um, more competitive things like Halo. Uh, all the shooters, Call of Duty, Rocket League more recently, a uh, little bit of Final Fantasy, but that's about it. Are you excited for BlizzCon? It should be interesting this year. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, kind of excited for it. Nothing I'm really like looking out for, but I always like to just watch anyway. So. Yeah, it's always a good, a good thing to watch. I like BlizzCon. Anyway, thank you guys for your time, and uh, I hope you guys... if. if you said Facebook, everybody can find you through there. It's uh, Instagram, all the socials, TikTok. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys for your time. And the game looks awesome, great. It worked, it plays really well, and you guys should go check it out.
up. We didn't get yelled at. That's good. Yeah. Th did you have fun? I did, actually. I very much did. That was EGLX, guys. Uh, yeah. If you didn't get a chance to check it out this year, definitely come check it out next year. It's a lot of fun. Lots of cool people getting interviewed. Lots of games to play. Anything else? I think right now we should just go play more games. I think that you're right. Yeah. We'll see you later, guys. If you guys like what you saw, Check out our all our socials down below and we'll catch you next time on Hey You Guys. Bye. See ya.